Do we appreciate and accept the uniqueness of every person we encounter in our life? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. At a meeting of the American Psychological Association, Jack Clifton, a psychologist at Union College, and R. Scott Bilioni, a graduate student at Columbia University, presented their findings on how members of the various sections of 11 major symphony orchestra perceived each other. The percussionists were viewed as insensitive, unintelligent, and hard of hearing, yet fun-loving. String players were seen as arrogant, stuffy, and unathletic. The orchestra members overwhelmingly chose loud as the primary adjective to describe the brass players. Woodwind players seemed to be held in the highest esteem, described as quiet and meticulous, though a bit egotistical. Interesting findings, to say the least. With such widely divergent personalities and perceptions, how could an orchestra ever come together to make such wonderful music? The answer is simple. Regardless of how those musicians view each other, they subordinate their feelings and biases to the leadership of the conductor. Under his guidance, they play beautiful music. In today's second reading, St. Paul talks about the diversity of the people who make up the Church, the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit that provided Jesus with the power to fulfill His mission, despite the extreme difficulties He experienced, has now been given to us, the members of His body. For in one Spirit we were all baptized in one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. Our diversity and uniqueness as individuals all contribute to betterment of this world from 1 Corinthians 12.13. We are a gift to one another, and we are God's gift to others. He wants us to use our own gifts, our talents, resources, and time to bless one another. We must thank those who have come before us, who have paved the way for our faith to grow. Our parents, for one, are the first to open our eyes to welcoming God in our lives. They taught us to pray, to adore, rely, and seek forgiveness from a loving God who created us and loves us despite our many transgressions. We also owe a debt of gratitude to the people today who keep us rooted in that faith, our priests, religion teachers, parish members, our renewal community. By their teachings and example, our faith continues to grow. Indeed, we are dependent on one another every single day to fulfill the Lord's will for us in our goal, that of holiness. We may be different in temperament, in values and virtues, in upbringing and experience, in economic standing, but we are all interconnected and interdependent. We cannot say that we do not need one another. As Paul says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor can the head say to the feet, I do not need you. When we say, I believe in God, but I do not believe in the church, there is some form of indictment on sinners and people who do not conform to our own standards. We may not realize it, but these are the people who will be important in our holiness journey. These sinners are the ones who will bring us to a deeper faith, who will teach us about compassion, forgiveness, and forbearance, who will be our gauge if we have grown in the fruit of the Spirit, that of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or humility, and self-control. We need each other. Our own weaknesses are compensated for by others. Our own strengths complement what others are incapable of, in building and strengthening the body of Christ. There are among us great preachers, writers, vloggers, computer techies, organizers and coordinators, planners and leaders, each one capable of contributing to the mission of Christ, which is our mission today. Can we honestly then say that we have attained some measure of holiness when we have not fully embraced Jesus' mission in today's Gospel reading to bring glad tidings to the poor, Proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free. All of them need conversion, whether they are physically or spiritually poor, imprisoned by their own sins, materialism and secularism, blinded by their pride, evil habits, addictions, and need for power, fame, and money, oppressed by their anxieties and depression. We pray that we can appreciate and celebrate each other's contributions to our own spiritual well-being and thank them for being a significant part of our life today. 
for we are who we associate with, we become who we accept as God's gift to us. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, weed out the pride and prejudice that wells in my heart, so that I may see the goodness in people, accept their role in my life, and in the process, I may develop the goodness in me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.